a kidnapper for a while. They were saying, yeah. <laughs> Good morning. We're so glad that you're here with us in, in worship. Oh, I'm kind of. Uh, we're so glad that you're here with us in worship. I want to again give a, a, a special thanks out to the uh, technology crew last week for putting uh, uh, together our, our worship so I could be in uh, my cousin's funeral. We're on the screen and I want to thank them for all their preparation. And I want to thank Pamela Tamenia for stepping up at the last minute to be the liturgist for us and doing a great job. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you all who uh, helped me to be where I needed to be with my family uh, last week. But here we are in worship today and we're so glad that you've chosen to be here, that you've chosen to come together and that we've chosen to come together in the presence of our God. Again, welcome, we're glad you're here. Let's sing our opening uh, song together. this morning. It's uh, their selections. Uh, it's selected from the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. 
I shall not want. God makes me lie down in green pastures. God leads me beside still waters. God restores my soul. God leads me in the paths, in the right paths for God's namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Join me now in our opening prayer. Let's pray together. Lord, you, you are, are our God, God and, and we are your people. people. We, we are, are like sheep, sheep and, and you are our shepherd. shepherd. Although, Although we, we are separated, separated at safe distances, distances this, this morning we come into your presence with joyful hearts, songs of praise, and an attitude of thanksgiving. In this hour of worship, Speak to us, your flock, of your grace, kindness, compassion, and eternal faithfulness. Amen. I'd now like for you to stand and we'll uh, sing our first hymn this morning, Christ Has Risen While Earth Slumbers. Christ Has Risen While Earth Slumbers. You'll recognize the, the tune. Let's stand together. Christ has risen while the slumbers, Christ has risen where hope died. As he said and as he promised, as we doubted and denied, let the moon embrace the blessing, let the sun sustain the cheer, let the world confirm the rumor, Christ is risen. Christ has risen for the people whom he loved and died to save. Christ has risen for the women bringing flowers to grace his grave. Christ has risen for the disciples huddled in an upstairs room. He whose word inspired creation is not silenced by the Christ has risen to companion former friends who fear the night, sensing loss and limitation where the faith had once burned bright. They bemoan what is no longer, they expect no hope or sign, till Christ ends their conversation, breaking bread and sharing wine. Christ has risen and forever lives to challenge and to change. All whose lives are messed or mangled, all who find religion strange. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen. Christ, Christ is, is present, making us what he has been, evidence of transformation in which God is known and seen. Please be seated. If we say we have no sin, then we're deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, our God who is merciful and just will forgive us of all of our sins and unrighteousness. Let us now together make our confession. Please join me. O oh, Good Shepherd, we confess that we are lost in the wilderness of our hard-hearted world. Chasing after our false pride has led us to stray into feelings of discouragement. 
neglecting our broken spirits has left us empty, angry, and doubting in our own thirst for living water. God, search for us. Lord Jesus, call out to us. Holy Spirit, claim us anew. Grant us the trust, hope, and love to live more fully and faithfully as the people of your pasture. Amen. Let us now take a, a moment for personal confession, reflections, meditation, and let's take a moment to listen for God to speak to our lives today. Who is in a position to condemn us? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. He rose for us. He reigns in power for us. He prays for you and for me. My friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let us now stand and greet one another with the peace of Christ by making some noise, honking our horns, clapping our hands, shaking our rattles. Amen. Amen and amen. Glory to God, whose goodness shines on me, and to the Son, whose grace has pardoned me, and to the Spirit, whose love has set me free. Amen. Please be seated. Our scripture lessons today come from the first letter of John and the, the Gospel of John. The first letter of John uh, are, are very small books right before Revelation, some of the smallest books in our Bible. Please join me in prayer. O oh, Holy God, we pray that you'll send your Spirit upon us open up our hearts, our minds, our very self to the, the reading of your word and, and its proclamation, that today we may hear the, the message that you have for each of us and us together today through the grace of the Lord Jesus. In his name we pray, amen. From the first letter of John, the third chapter, We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. By this we will know that we are from the truth and will measure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything, beloved. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God. And we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, 
that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. And now from the, the Gospel of John, the 10th chapter, where Jesus declares himself the Good Shepherd. Jesus says, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. The wolf snatches them and snatches and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. For I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father has known me and I know the Father. I and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. We thank God for these words of life. At three in the morning, it sounds a lot like a baby lamb. Now, I never raised a lamb. I've never herded sheep. So I don't know much about uh, raising sheep and being a shepherd. But I do know a little bit about babies. And this week, we started Helen's parenting class with the electronic baby. Friday night, or I should say Saturday morning at three in the morning, I hear rah, rah, rah. You're familiar with these electronic babies, aren't you, in, in school? Both girls and boys take them home, but this was Helen's turn to, to have the, the, the baby. It's in order to, for them to, to learn the responsibilities and particularly, I think, the burden of, of parenthood. Helen is, is responsible for providing for the, the little baby. She's responsible for, for protecting the, the, the little baby and she's responsible for making sure it's, it's, it's fed. You see, she, she changes the little baby. The sensor will go off and the baby will cry and she'll have to change the, the diaper to, to, to provide for it. And then uh, she has to be very careful to, to hold the head like a little baby. If it drops, it'll cry and, and that will also be read on the, the computer. So she's got to protect the, the little, little baby. And about every four hours, she has to apply with the abundance of, of milk. She has to, to get the, a little electronic bottle into that baby for it to, to stop crying. Yeah, taking care of a, a baby is a lot of, of work. It takes a, a lot of, of care. You've got to, to provide for it. You've got to keep it safe. You've got to... to, to to feed it. And like I said, I don't know much about 
shepherd or being a sheep, but I know it's a big responsibility taking care of a, a real baby, let alone an electronic baby. But as we reflect on God's care for us, God says to you and to me, you belong, you belong to my flock. The good shepherd says to you and to me, you belong to me. The good shepherd says to you and to me that, that you're loved, that you are our love. And we know that God is calling out to you and to me to provide for us, to let us know that we're loved, that we belong, that we are Jesus' people. And as Jesus' people, we know that we belong. We know that we're loved. And today, we can recognize that we have one who cares for us, one who provides for us, who protects us, who cares for us, and that is the good shepherd, Jesus. Now, although this shepherd image is a, a bit of a, a strange image for you and for me, not many of us have heard a sheep or, or even taking care of a, of a lamb. But for the people of Jesus' time, this would have been a, a regular occurrence. Now, the image of a, of a shepherd is a, a powerful image to the people of Israel. In reality, shepherds were not looked favorably upon. It was a, a menial job, often seen as unclean and kind of a, a low character job. But yet that image of a shepherd was a powerful image for the people of Israel. And Jesus knew that when he declared that he was the good shepherd. Because the ideal king, King David, was a shepherd. You remember that when he was called, when, when Jesse called for him to come from the field in order for Samuel to anoint him to be king, that he was out being a shepherd as a, a small boy, but yet also the king. And thus the, the image of shepherd both pointed to David and a, a royal king with authority. But Jesus says that he is the, the good shepherd. And people would have known what a good shepherd would be. A good shepherd in really caring for the sheep. They would have seen the, the shepherd herding the sheep along the hillside, leading them to, to green pastures, to streams. They would have also seen the, the shepherds herding the sheep into the, the sheep's folds at night to protect them, into a, a local corral where, where different shepherds could mix their flocks together into the corral so that they could together watch over them at night and keep them safe from any wolves or, or predators. And then it would have been a, a regular occurrence for them to see the, the shepherds to leave, to go out outside of the, the ring, and then call for their sheep and their sheep to, to file, file out and, and follow them. You see, the sheep would recognize the voice of their shepherd. It wouldn't follow the voice of the other shepherds, but they would specifically go to the one who had cared for them, the one that they knew the one that they wanted to, to follow. And so they would hear the voice and they would go out and, and follow. And Jesus uses that image for uh, his, uh, 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 his image of, of who he is, who he is as the, the good shepherd. You see, he wants to care for his people he wants to care for you and me like a, a shepherd who, who cares for his, his sheep. He wants to be responsible and loving. He wants to provide and keep them safe and, and have them overflow with abundance 
and joy. And certainly the passage we read for our opening, our call to worship, is the one that most quickly comes to mind for us when we think of the Good Shepherd, isn't it? The 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Isn't it in, in this passage that we see that, that God provides the, the green pastures and the, the still waters? We hear in this image of the rod and the staff, those that protect us in the darkest valley. We, in our traditional King James, as I learned as a kid, the valley of the shadow of death. And that still rings clear for us, doesn't it? It's in that valley of death that we most want that protection from our good shepherd. But yet it's also in the darkest valley in any of the challenges that we may face, not just death, but loneliness, isolation, struggle, brokenheartedness, depression, all those things that can overshadow the, the joy and the purpose of our lives. We're not alone in our struggle with them, but it, we know that the good shepherd, that, that Jesus wants to be beside us, just as a shepherd would be protecting their sheep in a flock. Jesus wants to watch over us and protect us. And just as the 23rd Psalm in the image of the banquet table and the, the head anointed with oil and the cup overflowing, Jesus has the good shepherd wants us to know that there is abundance for us. There, there may not be overflowing of wealth or overflowing of food, but in Jesus there is an overflowing of love. In Christ, in the way of the Good Shepherd, the love never runs out. The love is always overflowing into our world. There's never a shortage, but there's always a need. It's never empty, but it's always flowing into our world. These are images of the Good Shepherd that Jesus wanted the people of his time to know, that John wanted his church to know, to comfort them and strengthen them and to help them to, to push on in times of real challenge. By the time the Gospel of John is written, Christians are under persecution. They've been kicked out of the, the synagogues and they're under persecution by the, the Romans. By the time that we are, are, are receiving this passage from John or his church is receiving it. They know what it's like to be chased by the wolves and to have danger at their throats. So this passage of, of a good shepherd reminds them and you and me that we're not alone, but that we're in a, a larger flock that we have each other on this journey to support one another and to, to walk with one another. But more importantly is that we have the Good Shepherd. We have Jesus, just as they had Jesus, to give us hope when, when we feel hopeless, to even search for us when we're lost, and to, to carry us home as Matthew has in his parable, home to, to Jesus. These are our ways that, that we experience the, the good shepherd. My friends, we don't have Roman persecution. We're, no one's kicking us out of our houses of worship. But yet we have our challenges today that I hope the good shepherd can speak to you. We have our fears of, of brokenness. We have our fears in this pandemic. We have so much loss that we've experienced, so much trauma and change that we can't explain and understand that, that maybe this Good Shepherd passage is written just for us, just for us to remind us not to go astray in our own fears, not to, to get lost in our own excuses or our own initiatives and our own power, but to, to trust the, the good shepherd, to trust that 
that God, even in these challenging times, will lead us to green pastures and still waters. That will remind us, even in this darkest valley, even as we've been through the valley of the shadow of death during this COVID pandemic, that we've not been alone, that God has protected us and Jesus has went with us. And even as Easter people, even as we've had to face death, we know that we have a good shepherd that reaches into the darkness of death and brings back life. So we have experienced this shadow of death even today, but we have the good shepherd to go beside us. And as we've had to face shortages, have we've had to, to count our resources, have we've had to examine our abundance often, we have to also realize that God is continually anointing us and causing our cups to overflow. As I said earlier, not necessarily overflow with abundance, but overflowing with love and care and fellowship. Either we've had shortages of things. We've run thin, I've run thin emotionally, personally, but yet in our togetherness, when we share, we have an abundance. And I would say that when we are, are working together, when we're worshiping together, that our cups are even overflowing with God's blessings. My friends, you belong to the good shepherd. My friends, that love has claimed you and brought you into his flock. And my friends, in that flock, God wants to provide for you and protect you and to remind you that his love is overflowing with steadfastness and sureness. So my friends, today, even as we face our pandemic challenges, even as we face our, our personal challenges, we have a, a road to follow. We have a, a way to go. And that's the, the road with the Good Shepherd. It's following the way of, of Jesus, the way that lets us know that we belong and that we're loved and that we're never alone because the Good Shepherd is always calling with us and going with us and always claiming us. So today, as we go out into the world, let us show the world, even in these struggles, even in all our questions, even in all our fears and worries, that we are people that belong and that follow the Good Shepherd. Amen. Amen and amen.
This is a part of the worship service where we uh, gather together and share our joys and concerns and then lift them up to our God in, in prayer. <clears throat> I have a, a couple of uh, uh, concerns that I, I do want to, to share with you. Um, one is for uh, Karen, who has a, a serious heart problem but is not pursuing medical care, and we're wanting her to kind of uh, take care of herself and get to a doctor. So we want to pray for Karen. Also, we want to pray for Bill Gaynor. This is a friend of Ellen and Doug Law, who is in the hospital with COVID-19 uh, and has been put on a respirator. So we want to uh, keep uh, Bill in our prayers as well. Also, he has been on our prayer list for some time. Um, uh, Barb Spurgeon's uh, son-in-law, uh, Cliff, has, has passed away. He had a long battle with, uh, with cancer and was doing better, but uh, it, it has changed and, and Cliff has, has died. And which of the daughters is? It's not Julie. Kathy, I was going Julie, Jane, Kathy. Okay, thank you. Kathy, thank you. This is Kathy's husband, yeah. Are there any other uh, joys and concerns that uh, we want to share with each other today? Yes, Betty, we will get to you, Betty. We're glad you're here. I'm glad that you have made it through another winter, and you and I will talk in just a little bit, okay? Okay, okay. God bless you. Yeah, yeah. Is there, is there a microphone up here? No, there's not, no. D does, it, does anybody need a microphone? I think, I think we're going to be good. Okay. With that, uh, let's, uh, let's join together in prayer. Oh, did we, did, uh, uh, Ruth, did you have a, a prayer concern, Ruth? Oh, here comes the microphone, Ruth. I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm sorry, Ruth, that I didn't see you up, uh, your hand up earlier. I'm, I'm not hearing you. I'm, I'm. I can't hear you, Ruth. That's not picking you up. I'm asking for prayers. My daughter, Mary Jo, called, and they're calling everybody of the different churches, asking for prayers for the grandmother and the young man and the man that was stabbed at the filling station the other day. He's one of Angelo's classmates when he was in grade school. She said he's been a handful since he was young, but the grandmother raised him and his sister, and she's just devastated. So pray for her and the young man. And the, other, and, yes. and the man that was stabbed. Yes. Thank you, Ruth. <clears throat> Technology, it is wonderful, isn't it? Yes. Let's come together in prayer. Oh God, you are ever caring, ever watching, ever ready to enter our lives and to claim us and to lead us in paths of righteousness. Lord, we pray that we will have hearts that will follow and ears that listen, and, and lives that want to be guided by a good shepherd. Lord, in our struggles, in our losses, in our hurts, Lord, we, we recognize that we need help, that we can't make it on this journey of life of lo alone, but that we need the help of our good shepherd. We need your help, God, to lead us 
to guide us and to, to carry and lift us when we, we are hurt or lost. Lord, we pray that we will trust you as a good shepherd to care for us and to provide and to, to lead us in the way that you would have us go. Lord, as we struggle, as we feel lost, remind us that you never forget us or forsake us, but are always pursuing and, and calling for us and, and wanting us to, to stay with you and your flock. Lord, as has the members of this flock called the Church of Jesus, that we come in prayer, knowing that our prayers are heard and known and acted upon. And so, Lord, we ask that you will touch Karen's heart, help her to, to know that she needs to take care of herself, help her to know that she needs to go to the doctor to have her heart cared for. Lord, we pray that you'll be with Bill, help him as he struggles to breathe with the respirator. We pray, Lord, that you'll help him to battle the COVID virus and for his lungs to be strong and to come off the, the respirator. And we pray for all those that are battling COVID today, those that have experienced it, and those who have experienced the loss of, of loved ones. Lord, we, we want to put this behind us, and we're so ready, but Lord, we pray that you'll keep us patient and, and aware and, and cautious as we move to the end of this pandemic. We pray, Lord, that soon that it will subside and Lord, we pray for all those that have been affected and all those who've lost so much. And Lord, today we pray for Cliff's family, particularly Kathy at the loss of her husband, but for the whole family at his, at his death. It was a, a long and brave struggle with cancer. And Lord, we pray that Cliff is knowing your peace and that we know the, the hope of, of the life to come. Lord, we pray for those who are in this violent attack here in, in Florissant. We pray for those to heal and those that were involved, their whole families, that you give them a, a confidence and a peace that even in this confusion that there is your hand and your guidance. And where there needs to be healing, that there will be a, a, a touch of, of care and, and wholeness. Lord, we ask that you be with, with Fern and you be with uh, Wayne and Jean and Trish, be with John and Doris, Carol, be with Sarah, be with Pamela, be with Georgiana's brother, be with uh, uh, Mary's brother, be with Lil and be with Jake, be with uh, Sean and, and Lynn, be with all those who uh, go unspoken that need to know your touch, those that are battling cancer and serious health issues. Lord, we ask once again that you be with the family of Bob Williams on his passing. Be with Betty and help her as she moves forward to make her plans and be with her, her family as they, they comfort and strengthen her. And Lord, we pray that you'll be with Chris and his family as they grieve the, the tragic loss of his, his great niece's niece and nephew in a horrible house fire. Lord, we pray that you will comfort them and, and give them directions of hope. All this, Lord, we come to you as the sheep of your fold. Help us, Lord, not to stray, not to, to get lost, but to, to stay close to you and in your way. And trust that you will lead us to, to care and safety and prosperity. Help us to know that you are faithful and that you are the good shepherd who did lay down his life for us and took it up again so that we might know that we have life and have it abundantly and, and eternally. Now, Lord, watch over us as we go out into our world that we might be ambassadors of the good shepherd and that we might share his love with all those who we encounter. And it's in his name that we pray as he taught us as disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I have really just one announcement for you, and that is uh, for our uh, grab-and-go meals. We had one this last uh, Thursday, and we're making a transition, and this is where we need your part in this. Uh, you know, we've been making the grab-and-go, and it's been a, a lot. We started out uh, uh, having some tables for us to eat together, and then others to take their sacks in their car during COVID and, and go. Well, we're going to move back into having uh, a combination of grab and go and cooking up kindness. We're going to invite you to come and we're going to set at safe distances. We're going to still wear our masks, but we're going to take some time to, to visit and share and start a slow process of, uh, of coming together again in a safe way. So it's not going to be uh, next week, but the next week we will have another grab and go meal with uh, a cooking up kindness meal. And we hope that you'll come out and we'll uh, share this time together as we did before the pandemic, although safely at this time, we're not quite through it yet. You know that and I know that, but we're trying to make some baby steps to moving forward for the fall. Uh, so that's just an announcement and that we, we need your help and we need your participation to help us to, to move forward. So are there any other announcements, anything that I have uh, missed from the elders or? Well, then I invite you, let's stand and we'll sing our final hymn this morning, Savior, Like a Shepherd, Lead Us. Let's stand together and sing, Savior, Like a Shepherd, Lead Us. My friends, we are the people of the Good Shepherd. I invite you now as you go out into your world to share that relationship. Go and tell people about a shepherd that 
provides and a shepherd that protects and a, a, a shepherd that gives you abundantly. Go and share with our world that we are the people of the good shepherd. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. May the Lord, mighty Lord, bless and keep you forever. Grant you peace, perfect peace, courage in every endeavor. Lift your eyes and see His face and His grace forever. May the Lord, mighty and keep you